All right. Hello, everyone. Good evening. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, everyone, for taking this time to learn about the Carillon communities and, and welcome to today's session. My name is Ben Beltran. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the assistant director for the Carillon communities. Um, we're really delighted to virtually be in community with you all and to tell you a bit about Carillon and answer some of your questions this evening. Um, but before we begin, first of all, we want to say congratulations on your admission to the University of Maryland. We know that you have outstanding credentials and accomplishments, and we're really looking forward to welcoming you to the class of 2027. Um, so just a quick overview of today's session. So uh, Dr. Abby McEwen, Carolyn's faculty director, will sort of introduce us, um, and then I will provide some information about Carolyn and the first year experience that we offer. Um, and then we will move to uh, hearing from four of our students. Um, so Josh, Ella, Lucy, and Vruti will be able to answer some questions that we have um, and also be able to answer some questions that you all might pose to them as well to really learn more about um, the, the student experience in Carillon. Um, if at any point you have a question when we're covering information, please feel free to utilize the Q&A function. It should be like on the right hand side of the screen. Um, we have staff members who will make sure that your questions are received and we'll do our best to answer those. Um, and, and we'll save those toward the end for the Q&A portion, but we'll get to um, as many of them as we can. Um, if you feel compelled, I think there's also an option to sort of verbally ask a question out loud. Um, so that's that there should be a button there for that as well if, if you feel so compelled. Um, great. So now let me go ahead and turn things over to Abby, our faculty director who will say a few words of introduction. Great, thanks so much, Ben. Good evening, everyone. It's wonderful to kind of meet you tonight virtually. We hope to meet you on campus in the next several weeks this spring. We've been in touch with many of you via email and phone and through social media already. And it's really, really terrific um, to get to know um, all of our admitted students. Um, Carillon Communities is a one-year living learning program built on the values of teamwork and creative problem solving. Since we welcomed our first class in 2014, Carillon has served as a launching pad to a meaningful and individualized UMD experience for thousands of students. We support students in their transition from high school to college and beyond by offering special opportunities linked courses within each community, collaborative projects, community-wide programming within an intentionally compact structure. Our students interact closely with Carillon faculty and instructors, getting to know them personally in small class settings and through community events. We truly believe that Carillon can be transformational for our students and set them up for success at UMD and throughout their lives. Now, you may wonder about your invitation to Carillon. We purposely do not define an ideal Carillon student. Academic talent is a given for all students invited to Carillon. That is defined by UMD's high standards for admission. We work with university admissions and partner with schools and colleges across campus to invite a diverse group of students with all kinds of interests, aspirations, and backgrounds. Students choose Carillon because they want to be a part of our smaller community on campus and because they want to explore collaborative and creative problem solving at the college level. Now, back to Ben to get into the nitty gritty of what Carillon is. All right, thanks, Abby. So as Abby shared, Carillon is a one-year living learning program. Uh, living learning programs are exactly what their name implies, right? You take courses and you live with other students with whom you have a common interest. Uh, this shared experience helps you to build relationships with your peers early in your college career, easing you through that transition from high school to college and to form key relationships with the faculty that lead your community. Living and learning programs take advantage of the fact that we learn 24 seven. Our learning never stops and Carillon maximizes these opportunities to connect with you inside and outside of the classroom. 
So we front load these academic and community experiences so that you're able to make the most of not only your first year on campus, but of your entire undergraduate career as well. During your time in Carillon, you will begin to develop the skills, knowledge, and mindsets that will serve as a foundation for your academic and professional success. In this year, you will take two courses, which will total four credits, and that's it. This allows you the flexibility to pursue your major requirements and other extracurricular interests. Within Carillon, there are 12 different communities. Their size will range from about 30 to 60 students, um, and the program overall will have over 400 students. Communities are designed to help you pursue an area that's of interest to you, something that would maybe complement your major, but it doesn't need to be aligned with your major. So each community is defined by its three credit general education course, which helps you to fulfill graduation requirements. These courses are all I series, which is unique to UMD. Each I series course addresses a key issue or a big question that impacts our world. And on the screen here, you can see our different communities and some of those big questions, right? Can art affect social change? How do I give? Is data beautiful? Um, just to give you a sense of some of the questions that, that our communities are, are addressing. So these courses are taught by UMD faculty who have a deep expertise in their fields and passion for teaching. Our faculty consistently describe teaching Carillon students as a highlight of their academic year, and they often mentor students through internships, fellowship and job applications, and in their labs and their own research. So in addition to the I-series course, all students in Carillon enroll in the Carillon Studio course. Uh, in the Carillon Studio, we equip you with the tools needed to be innovators in any field. The tools we practice come from the field of design and introduce you to creative problem solving. You will apply these skills of brainstorming, prototyping, iteration, and revision to the big questions, as well as to yourself. A highlight of the course is the Design My Maryland project, in which students might identify a potential major, determine how to gain essential experiences in that field, or make plans for a study abroad experience. In partnership, these two courses set the foundation of the Carillon program and its focus on creative problem solving and teamwork. Both courses have significant teamwork components. We focus on teamwork because it's an important skill to cultivate for success in college, as well as in the workforce, where an ability to work well with others ranks among the most highly sought after skills by employers recruiting new employees right out of college. And now I'll turn it back over to Abby to talk a little bit about some other opportunities that we have for our students as well. Thanks so much, Ben. Um, many of our Carillon community students um, are so engaged in their first semester on campus that they ask about opportunities that extend beyond that kind of first year. And so we've been able to launch and introduce um, over the past few years, some different opportunities for students to continue um, to engage with Carillon throughout the rest, the rest of their college career. Many of our students um, come back to the Carillon studio to work as kind of peer mentors. Um, almost all sections of IDEA 101, our studio course, um, have a peer mentor in the classroom alongside kind of their instructor. Um, these peer mentors are past Carillon students, um, and we know that they provide um, kind of guidance, kind of mentorship, um, kind of to our first year kind of Carillon students. Um, they also get academic credit um, for being peer mentors within Carillon. Um, our students also have opportunities to serve as ambassadors for our program. Um, we're very fortunate to have four ambassadors joining our webinar um, tonight. Um, our ambassadors help us to recruit um, our new class, our new cohort of Carillon kind of students. Um, they offer tours, they answer questions, they share um, all kinds of things about their, their first year on campus. Many of um, our I-series courses, um, including my own, um, employ undergraduate kind of teaching assistants or peer mentors. Um, they've become a, um, a really significant part of kind of the Carillon experience. 
a lot of our students um, really do want to return to kind of their Carillon community course as peer mentors, as teaching assistants, and we're happy to give them those opportunities. Um, we've launched the Carillon Communities kind of Council um, this past year. Um, this allows at least one student from each community to meet with Carillon program staff um, about every month um, to check in, to provide feedback to us, to make kind of suggestions for future events and programming. Um, we see and recognize um, the advisory council um, as kind of leaders and for their work on the council, also for their work as ambassadors, teaching assistants, peer mentors, our students have the opportunity to earn micro-credentials or uh, digital badges um, through kind of UMD. Um, students will be able to co collect these micro-credentials, these badges um, kind of virtually, and at the time that they graduate, these virtual badges will be kind of translated into um, commencement kind of cords to recognize and honor their work uh, with Carillon. The spring semester of their first year, there are two kind of optional courses that are kind of reserved for uh, Carillon students. Um, our I Give course, um, one of our Carillon fall communities, has um, a spring semester kind of component um, that we have in recent years opened up to students across kind of Carillon. Um, so although this is an extension of the I Give community. Um, Participation in I Give is not a prerequisite for continuing on um, in kind of policy 215. We're also introducing, and in collaboration with the Honors College and College Park Scholars, um, special sections of the Words of Engagement Intergroup Dialogue Program for students in these living learning programs. Um, this is a one credit course that allows students to satisfy one of Maryland's general education diversity requirements. And so this is, on the one hand, a convenient way for many of our students to satisfy a requirement, um, but it also allows them to continue their engagement um, with, with Carillon. Back to you, Ben. All right, thanks, Abby. So what Abby just described were some ways to sort of go a little bit above and beyond um, some great opportunities that we have for our students. Um, just to sort of, I guess, summarize before we move to the Q&A, um, Carillon is a one-year program, right? Uh, two courses, four credits total, and they're both in the fall semester, um, with some other possibilities that we just mentioned in the spring. Um, communities are consisting of 30 to 60 students usually, um, and they're led by a faculty member, and students across all 12 communities in Carillon um, will reside on campus um, in Easton Hall or Hagerstown Hall. Um, and so that's just the bare basics. We just want to sort of summarize that for folks. And of course, if you have questions, we can answer more about that in a little bit. So now I want to go ahead and sort of transition us to um, hearing from some of our students, right? Because we can talk about the program um, a lot, but the students can talk about what it really means to experience it. And so it's really great that we have some awesome students here this evening who will share their experiences. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and ask our four student panelists to um, sort of kick us off. Um, what we can do is I'll have each of you introduce yourselves, name and pronouns, um, your community uh, that you were in, what year you are, and maybe just tell us like a little bit about why you decided to come to UMD and why you chose Carillon. Cool, so my name is Lucy McCormick. I'm a freshman here. I'm studying criminal justice, criminology, and psychology as my double major. And that's mainly why I chose to come to Maryland is because they have a really great program for both criminal justice and psychology. And this past, fall I participated in the art and activism Carolyn community and I ended up loving it and that's why I'm here as an ambassador um, for Carolyn. Cool. 
Hi everyone, I'm Ella Cooper. I am a freshman here and I'm majoring in communications. I was in the iGive community and I liked it so much that I actually am taking the second course called Policy 215 now. Um, so I'm really excited to get to do that. And a little bit about why I came to Maryland and why I chose to do Carolina Communities. Um, I do live in state, so I kind of always wanted to go here. And then I decided to do Carolina Communities because I wanted to make such a large school feel a little bit smaller. And I feel as though I've been able to make a ton of great friends through this community. Hi, I'm Josh. I use he, him pronouns. I'm a freshman government and politics major. I was in the digital media and law community, which I don't believe is being offered next year, but it was, it was really cool. And the reason I came to Maryland is because it gives a really good balance of academics, sports, uh, nightlife, you get a little bit of everything here. And Caroline Communities really makes a, such a big school a little smaller. You have a nice community, people you can go to meals with, hang out with. Yeah. Hi everyone, my name is Rudy Sony, and I'm a computer science major. I'm also a sophomore. So the reason why I came to UMD was because I really liked the computer science program here and I really liked how active and friendly everyone was here. And I decided to participate in Carillon and be a part of Carillon was because I really thought that UMD was such a huge school and it kind of gave me a sense of community and belonging in this campus. Great, thank you all so much. Um, so my next question for you all is, could you share just a little bit about um, what was most meaningful to you or what value um, participating in Carillon added to your college experience? Um, I can go first. So Carillon not just gave me, like I said before, a sense of community, but it also allowed me to explore um, different paths that I was interested in. Before I'd come to college, I was kind of confused on what career field that I wanted to go into. But because of like being able to explore different types of fields and just being able to talk to other people, um, I was able to really figure out like what I wanted to do during college. And it really helped me out. Yeah, for me, it it really helped out with the transition from high school to college um, because it can seem a bit overwhelming. It's a big change, but having a having a community of people you're living with, you're going to classes with, even at the start, even second, third day we were here, we took a trip to D.C. together. That was really fun. So it may, makes the transition a lot easier. You have a built in group of people you're uh, you're living with, and that's the importance of living on your community. Yeah, I would say something that I also gained from it was really getting a closer connection with um, my professor in art and activism and the smaller one credit class as well. Um, I just think that those connections are really important. And not only was it just with those professors, but it helps me get more comfortable talking to professors in general and learning like how to talk in class, I guess, because it's a little bit different than high school. So I learned like to be more comfortable um, sharing what I thought in those classes because there were just so many opportunities to share your thoughts in the Carolina community. And it really helped prepare you for speaking in other classes as well and talking to professors and classmates. Yeah, I definitely feel like Carolina was kind of a built-in kind of support group, if that makes any sense. So um, if I ever had any questions, I could go to my professors for these Carolina courses. Um, and definitely, like Josh said about the DC trip on the first few days, as soon as we got here, we were kind of just already making friends and meeting people. So that was definitely helpful for my transition. Great, thank you. Um, so I know a couple of you touched on this a little bit, but I'm, I'm curious to hear a, a little bit more. Um, if you could share a little bit about your specific community and maybe interactions that you had with uh, your Carolan professor. Yeah, so in art and activism, um, I really ended up loving the class um, even more than I thought I would. I chose art and activism because it had nothing really to do with my majors and it was just something that I loved like growing up I just thought art was cool I didn't really know what to expect from the class and I thought like freshman year is kind of the perfect time to just try out these classes and see what they're about um 
So in my class, we really dug into the history of how different social movements and times in history have been shaped through art and how different art has affected those social movements and social change. And that's just so cool um, because it really melded together two topics that I'm really interested in and in a way that I haven't heard of before in other classes, especially in high school. Um, so that was really interesting. And my professor was actually Dr. McEwen, um, who is here now. So that relationship was really great. I think she was a really great professor. And that's part of the reason why I came back to be an ambassador as well, just so that I could keep that connection. Um, yeah, that, uh, I kind of agree with all of that. But I was in the IGIP community, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so that community was kind of based all around philanthropy. And um, so we got to learn what really is philanthropy because I knew always that it was like giving to people, but I guess I was kind of confused on the real definition of it. So we really got to dig deep into learning about that. And then we actually got to donate a $7,500 grant to a real organization, nonprofit organization. So it was just cool to see how our work as um, individuals could really make an impact. Um, so that was really nice for me. So I was part of the data visualization or um, visualizing knowledge community. And in that community, it really helped me to not just like look at data and see how like, you know, but you're able to really visualize and see it in a bigger picture. And at the end of the class, we were actually able to make a project um, and it was kind of interactive and we were able to work with groups and we were, we were able to show how um, different types of data can actually help us make like an amazing project like we were able to make something about just looking at like basketball statistics where would be the best you know place to play on the field or which player would be the best and it was able to take like our different types of skills and kind of make a project all together I was in the digital media and law community and basically we applied law to our daily online usage, social media, videos, blogs, and the culminating project at the end of the course was to make our own ethics code for how we're gonna do things online in our everyday life. And one uh, one really great uh, interaction I've had is actually with Carolan faculty, not my professor, but I, I had a long conversation with a couple of Carolan faculty members and really heard about a lot of, uh, a lot that there was to offer at UMD different uh, clubs there are, different internships that are available, and it really helped me figure out uh, how I'm going to spend my next four years. All right. Thanks, y'all. That's that's really great. Um, so we have lots and lots of questions in the chat. Um, some of them will will answer, um, the staff will answer in a moment, but we have some really good ones, I think, that I'd love for our students to answer. Um, we have a question here about the DC trip. Um, so someone's wondering if you all could talk more about the trip into DC um, and potentially other events that happen in the Carolina communities. Yeah, I know personally, I think with my Carolina group, um, I think I went on about three trips to DC, which was really awesome. Uh, the first one was the very first um, weekend that we moved into school, we got to move in I think a day or two earlier than people that weren't in living learning programs. So it was an opportunity for us that first day, it was just living learning programs here. So we all got together and went to DC um, with our groups. So we got to meet them all before classes started, which was really great. Cause then you go into the first day of classes knowing people. Um, and my group, we went to the Renwick Museum and just walked around DC a little bit. So that was really awesome. And then, Another trip was expanded to all of Carillon as well. Um, and we got the chance to go to the portrait gallery and the um, DC festival market, the holiday market in DC um, and just had some freedom shopping around there. And that was really awesome. My roommate and I went to that one together. Um, and then one that just my art and activism class went to, we went to a play in DC um, focusing on the struggles of immigrants and that was just a really awesome experience again. So all three of those opportunities, I would say it's really important to just take advantage of all the different opportunities that Carolyn gives you. Yeah, that's great. Um, another question from the chat that um, 
I'd love to hear from one of the four students what you think. How is it managing the work in the care long class and balancing that with your regular workload? I would say that it's it's very manageable. Um, your care long classes will be probably just about as much work as any other class. Um, you'll definitely have time to, to fit in a few other classes in your schedule and do some other extra, extracurriculars, do things on your own time. Um, so it kind of slots right in with everything else. It's not overbearing or too much work. Yeah, I would definitely, oh, sorry. Um, sorry. I would definitely agree with that. I never felt overwhelmed with um, my Carillon coursework. And for our one credit course, we very rarely had um, like a homework load outside of class. It was often just like reflections and then like a little assignment that we had a whole week to do. Um, so that was very manageable. And then I would say the stuff within the um, Carillon class itself was very manageable. It was really discussion based in my class as well. So a lot of things were so that you could come to class prepared to talk about what you read or what you watched for homework. So again, very manageable workload and different from my major classes. So it also provided some um, diversity in my course load, which was really great for me as well. Yeah, I know for me, when I first um, came to UMD, I thought it would be like unmanageable, but um, because especially because I was starting with like not knowing anything about my major. So, but overall, I thought it was really manageable and um, it was just, there was not much work outside of class. Most of it was like group work. The one credit class was mainly collaborative and even the three credit class was, it was extremely like group work and you could always like you know, ask the professor and they're very flexible. All right, great. So I know our team is, is answering some questions um, via the chat for folks because we're getting a lot of great questions. Um, I also know that we have some other questions um, that we've received. Um, so Abby or other folks, are there questions that you wanted to um, go ahead and address? Sure. Um, we've marked a few questions as ones that we will answer live. Let's see. Um, someone noted correctly that our session is being recorded. Um, it is. We should have um, the recording available um, with correct captions um, on our website by the end of the week. So look for it there. I'll also take this opportunity to um, kind of plug the faculty-led webinars that will happen in March. Um, students, um, as you know, in your kind of offer letter, we've invited you to preference um, at least three communities um, within Carillon by February 20th. You'll have your decision um, in early March once you know which community into which you've been placed. Um, those faculty um, will each have um, a short 30-minute webinar. So that's an opportunity um, for you to kind of meet virtually um, the faculty who is leading your kind of community. Um, a great opportunity to kind of meet faculty and also some other students um, who have also been placed into a given community. Uh, question on housing, um, many questions on housing. Um, our students next year will live between Easton Hall and kind of Hagerstown kind of Hall. I wonder if some of our students might talk a little bit about Easton Hall, um, where everyone is living this year. Am I right? Lucy, are you in your dorm room now? Yeah, I am in my <laughs> dorm. Um, so what's Easton like? Um, Easton's great because everyone in here is in Carillon. So you either know everyone in your hall from your class or one of the other Carillon classes. Um, my roommates in was in a different Carillon program, so there's no requirement to room like with your um, person in the same community as yours. Um, otherwise, Easton, I mean, I've had no problems with it. There's a um, a room on the first floor, the ground floor, um, that's like a community space center for all of the Carillon kids. Um, 
so it's pretty much just like a study center there's like tables desks in there, whiteboards things like that um it's like a collaborative study space so having that in the dorm is really great as well because I know not every dorm has access to like a learning living learning living program space like that one um so that was definitely a highlight as well to be able to have that in our building I guess for our other panelists, I'm curious, did you choose to live with a program roommate within Carillon or did, did you room with a non-program roommate? What was the kind of roommate selection process like for you? So for me, uh, my roommate is in another Carillon community and I actually ended up meeting him at orientation. He was my assigned randomly and my, my roommate at orientation and worked out both in Carillon and it's been great. I'll just say that we absolutely encourage our Carillon students to choose roommates who are also Carillon kind of students. Um, it can sometimes be awkward for non-program um, roommates to live in a dorm that is um, kind of mostly Carillon, mostly for Carillon kind of students. Um, non-program roommates wouldn't have access to some of the trips and other activities. Um, that you know are designed for kind of Carillon students. What's new next year, and I think this has also come up in the Q and A, um, is that students who select non Carillon, that is to say, non program roommates, will be assigned to Hagerstown Hall rather than to kind of Easton Hall. So that is perhaps um, a bit more of an incentive than to live in Easton. Um, I'll say Hagerstown is a new dorm for Carillon. Um, students who live there say that there is actually a wonderful community. There's some great um, kind of lobby level spaces. Um, the downside to Hagerstown is that there is not air conditioning. Um, sometimes you know, students and families are, are worried about the lack of air conditioning, um, but for virtually all of the academic year, air conditioning really doesn't come into play. And so students we hear you know, in Hagerstown, maybe for the first week of the semester, maybe the last week of the spring semester, you know, they're a bit warm, but for the most part, um, the air conditioning isn't as big of an issue as people worry about initially. Um, also, I see another question. So just to confirm about air conditioning, Easton Hall has AC. Um, Hagerstown Town Hall does not have AC. Um, a question, do the dorms have floor or carpeting? I guess that's like kind of like a vinyl floor versus a, or wood floor versus carpeting. That's a question for the students. My room is tile. Um, and then we just have, <laughs> I'll show you, it's just tile. And then we put a big carpet in the middle. Um, and I think all of the floors on Easton are tile. Yeah. I'm on a different floor and we also have tile. So I'm pretty sure all of the rooms are. Another question put to the ambassadors. Um, do you feel like your participation in Carillon um, has limited your exposure to the rest of UMD? I would say not at all, because I have gotten involved in a ton of other extracurricular activities. I've taken general education courses, major specific courses, and um, throughout all of these experiences, I've gotten to meet so many different people with so many different interests in a ton of other living learning programs. So I definitely don't think it's limited me at all from making friends pretty much everywhere. So yeah, I definitely would not consider it a limitation at all. Yeah, I would agree completely with Ella. Um, obviously, my roommates in Easton, or sorry, in Carillon, and I met her because we were both doing Carillon together, and that's how we decided to room together. But um, the four closest friends that we've made, two of them are in the dorm across from us, and two of them are in the dorm next to us, and that's who we're living with next year. None of them are in um, Carillon, but you meet people everywhere you go. Um, so I would say it hasn't limited us in the slightest bit from meeting people or making new friends or getting involved in any other activities.
Let's see, another question for the ambassadors. Um, some of you just are, have already described kind of your majors. You came into Maryland um, with a sense of what you wanted to study, but um, did Carolyn help you to kind of choose a major or choose a different major, add a minor? Um, did Carolyn have any bearing on your kind of academic plans for Maryland? Um, you go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, when I started off, I actually was deciding between mechanical engineering and computer science and actually doing the IDEA 101 class or the Carolyn Studio class. Um, it helped me to understand, like, to actually interview people that I wanted to be, like, in the future and, like, what my job might look like if I were them in the future. And so that actually helped me to decide that I really did want to do computer science. And it um, kind of enforced the idea that, like, um, I want to continue on with this major and, like, explore the paths because I was able to see people in that field and really understand, like, what my day-to-day -day life would look like. Um, I had a similar experience. So I came in as an elementary education major, and then I just switched to communications. Um, and throughout the same process that um, you were just describing, I was able to interview people in both different fields of education and communications. And I kind of got to see um, both things. I'm also very indecisive. So um, I definitely think that did help me out a lot. And I kind of realized that maybe my interests did veer more towards um, the communications route. So I would say that um, throughout those interviews and different experiences I had, just kind of putting myself out there in different um, social interactions and things like that definitely helped me figure out what I like to do. Yeah, I would say, I mean, I already came to Maryland fully committed to both of my majors. Um, but again, art and activism didn't really have too much to do with either criminal justice or psychology, but it was just a really good opportunity to take classes that weren't just my core major classes. So I had some diversity in my schedule and it was something that I really enjoyed. So it didn't change my major at all, but um, I still enjoyed it nonetheless. And I definitely wouldn't have chosen a different class over that one last semester. Yeah, I, I came in knowing I was going to be government politics major, but through the idea one of idea one one class, the interviews like uh, I've been talked about before, I, I kind of figured out what types of classes are available, what different internships, research opportunities to to kind of get into the field of work. Josh, you just mentioned idea 101. Um, I wonder if you could say a little bit more about that course, what you've learned about creative problem solving, what design thinking has been to you and, and to the rest of our panel. Yeah, um, I think it was, it was a very valuable class for me. I, I learned how to work with people who have different perspectives and also kind of when I'm, when I'm thinking, brainstorming what I, how to solve a certain problem or what career I want to go into, kind of just laying all the options out there, not putting pressure on myself. Um, it was it was actually, it was really helpful in figuring out the different specific options I have. Like for me as a government politics major, I decided, well, I could either go the path of campaigning, I could go, I'd end up going to law school and what would that look like? Um, so that class really gave us the, the resources and time and skills to kind of figure out those types of questions. Okay, so I'll encourage our attendees to continue to put questions into the chat for our student panelists. In the meantime, I can try to run through some of our kind of Carillon um, kind of a lot of housing kind of questions. Um, we don't um, randomly kind of assign kind of roommates. Students are able to request um, Carillon, let us say program roommates. You can also request a non-program roommate. Um, but knowing that um, in that scenario, you and your non-program roommate would be assigned to Hagerstown Hall. Um, 
Absolutely, international students are invited to participate in kind of Carillon, and we've seen uh, more and more international students join our community in recent years. Um, we try to have you know, a mix of in-state, out-of-state, and international kind of students. So our students come from across the country, um, across kind of the world. Um, let's see. If you decide to take a gap year, yes, um, absolutely you um, retain your invitation to Carol on. Um, it may be that our communities change um, year over year. So Josh, for example, mentioned that his community, digital media and law, is not going to be offered next year. And that's because our faculty member, Deb Nelson, is going on sabbatical. And so that course may, in fact, be offered two years from now. And so year to year, our communities may change. Um, and so we would ask you to submit a different preferencing kind of sheet, um, you know, a year from now, but absolutely you would still retain your, um, your invitation. Um, what else? Um, will there be a future Carol on communities meeting kind of in person? Um, so I'll say we absolutely encourage you to attend one of the four admitted student open house dates um, after you know, a hiatus because of the pandemic, we'll be back to in-person events. And we really look forward to meeting kind of students and kind of families at these events. It's, those are really a great opportunity to kind of see campus, uh, meet other kind of admitted students and really um, get a sense of what Carillon and Maryland are, um, are all about. There are over the summer four um, designated orientation days for Carillon students. Um, you're not required to kind of attend an orientation on one of those days, um, but if you do, there is an opportunity then to meet Carillon staff and other kind of Carillon students as a kind of a special event attached to those kind of orientations. So absolutely, we want to meet you in person. If it happens that you can't make um, one of the open house dates, um, please reach out to us. You know, we're happy to arrange a separate kind of tour, maybe with one of our, you know, student ambassadors. We can show you the dorm. We can show you around kind of campus. Um, so please don't, don't hesitate um, to let us know that you'd like to schedule something, um, some other kind of visit. Um, Abby, I'm seeing a bunch of questions about the interest form and whether that locks folks in. And so... Um, it might be just worth saying that folks should definitely submit that interest form by the 20th, but that doesn't lock you into the Carillon communities. It just sort of holds a spot for you. Um, so there's a few questions about that. So go ahead and fill that out. You're not you're not um, signing on to anything if, if you do that. Right, just to echo what Ben is saying, um, fill out the interest form, even if you're not sure that you're, you want to participate in Carillon or even that you want to come to kind of Maryland. Um, but if we have your interest form, we'll hold a spot for you. So that way you retain the option of participating kind of, or not. Um, and certainly there's the question, if you decide that Carillon isn't for you, um, of course you're allowed to um, kind of switch out of um, Carillon. Um, depending on the date at which you do this, you may be assigned housing with a whole bunch of Carillon kind of students. Um, but, you know, we do occasionally have students who um, often it's a scheduling kind of conflict um, who can't um, fit in the Carillon classes, but that's a fairly rare um, kind of scenario. Um, I also saw a question about costs. So participation in Carillon, um, like any other living learning program at Maryland, um, does not um, burden families and students with any additional costs. So the trips to DC, um, our special events, um, those costs are all covered by you know, the program. Um, and a question about classes, how they're graded. Carillon classes are graded like every other class um, that students take um, kind of at kind of Maryland. Um, so on kind of a, you know, a letter kind of grading scale. Any other questions? There's a good question here um, that I think the staff can answer or one of the students. 
Um, what advice would you give to students when selecting their top three Carolina communities on that interest form? If anyone has thoughts about that. Um, I personally, when I was choosing, I decided to go with the I Give community because I have kind of always had a passion for giving back to my community. And I think a ton of the things that I did in high school kind of reflected that. So I was really interested in continuing on with, on with that. However, if I know some people feel inclined to pick a community based on their major and things like that, and although that might be helpful for you, it's um, you don't necessarily need to pick one that's related to your major at all. So if you are majoring in biology and you want to be in a community that has absolutely nothing to do with that, then by all means, go for it and give that a shot. Um, yeah, I, again, I would say that I chose, I tried to choose a program that again, didn't really have much to do with my major and one that was more on the, I guess I would say like fun side for me. Um, art and activism just seemed like a fun class that I wanted to take. And I figured um, if I'm going to do this program, I'd like to take a class that, you know, I probably wouldn't have chosen for like a strict major requirement. I just want to do something that I'll enjoy. Um, so that's why I chose art and activism first. Um, and then my other two options very similarly were just things that, you know, I thought could either help me out at my time as a freshman. Um, I could learn some new things. They were all three things that I didn't really know much about. So that's kind of why I chose my top three. I'll just add that we as a program try to be very thoughtful in shaping each community. So we wouldn't want a community of, I don't know, say, 30 women or 30 kind of Maryland residents or 30 international students. Um, although we really do prioritize student preferences, we want to give you your first or second choice. We also want to put you in a kind of representative and interesting kind of group of students um, within kind of Carolan's kind of class. So we take in your preferences and also try to build individual communities um, that re represent the greater diversity of Carolan. Um, I do see a question. If you're not if you're not placed in a community that you really want, um, kind of reach out to us. You know, we're happy to kind of make some changes around um, kind of the edges. It has occasionally happened that after students register for courses over the summer, um, the, you know, the course one course that they need for their major conflicts with their Carillon course, and then we're happy to kind of work with you to find another option within Carillon. Um, Carillon kind of community classes, the I-series classes are offered at all different times within say the regular schedule of classes. And so um, it's very likely that we'd be able to, to place you within a different Carillon community. I'm just seeing a couple of other housing questions. There are not single rooms available in Easton. Um, for students who have um, an accommodation, um, for students who might like, for example, a gender inclusive uh, bathroom, for students who would like to be close to Hillel, um, we know that those students uh, might prefer to live elsewhere, so not in Easton or Hagerstown. And resident life is able to accommodate those students um, to the extent that we can, we will try to group Carillon students together kind of in these other um, kind of dorms, um, kind of given kind of their, their needs. Um, what else? Um, you cannot be a part of um, multiple living learning programs. So if you choose to participate in Carillon, that means that you cannot participate in, say, the Honors College, College Park Scholars, Civicus, um, any of the other pro programs. Um, you just, it's just one. Um, let's see. When you're filling out the interest form, um, you should see a drop down menu, and that will allow you to pick, um, I think, up to five or six 
communities that are of interest to you. Um, we ask that you give us three options, but you can, I believe, indicate even more than three, three courses, three communities. Um, and yes, absolutely, the Carillon classes count toward total graduation credit requirements. Um, your I-Series course counts toward that I-Series Gen Ed. All of the Carillon I-Series courses also have an additional um, Gen Ed um, designation. So for example, students in my course, Art and Activism, they get, get I-Series credit, and then they can choose between humanities and scholarship and practice credit. Um, so the idea is that our students you know, through their work with Carillon are also getting credit toward graduation requirements. Maybe one last question for our panel before we'll just run over some deadlines. Um, I'll let Ben take it from there, but for our students, what were the advantages and benefits of joining Carillon for you, kind of summing up your Carillon experience? I would say the uh, the biggest upside for me was the community aspect, where there's a group of people who I will would go to class with, and then go to lunch after, and then go to a football game with, and it just it's really a built in community. And it makes it a much larger school feel smaller at times, which is nice when it's it's a big school, but you're able to have this small community you can hang out with and go to class with as well. Um, I would say, again, I really enjoyed the class curriculum through my art and activism program. Um, it was just all the things that we talked about in class were really interesting to me and the project that we did at the end of the year. Um, it was so cool to be able to have a say in what we wanted to implement on the campus. Um, each class has a different curriculum that they go through depending on their big question, but ours was um, how does art affect social change? Can art affect social change? And we got to choose our own projects as groups to reflect on that question and actually show other students how we felt about that question. And I just thought that was really cool. It was something that I really enjoyed talking with other students about um, and learning more about. Um, so I would definitely say the class was probably one of my favorite parts of Carolyn outside of the opportunities and the trips and things like that. Yeah, I would say my answer is kind of a combination of uh, what Lucy and Josh both said. So I definitely really enjoyed my Carolyn class. Um, I felt that uh, we had such a hands-on impact in the course that I took and um, being able to actually interview various nonprofit organizations and choose a nonprofit organization to donate a grant to was just, it really felt rewarding for me. Um, plus the course, um, the whole semester was just discussion-based, very hands-on. Um, and I feel like it made me better at collaborating with my peers and more comfortable doing so in an academic setting in general. Um, and then with that being said as well, um, living with the same people that I did take classes with was really cool because we could walk to class together. We could, um, like Josh said, uh, go to the dining hall together. And I know that sometimes we would learn things in class and we would seriously have heated discussions about them at the dining hall for hours after, as crazy as it sounds. But no, so I just thought the whole class was super rewarding for me. For me, my favorite part was like just, I also would say the class. I was really able to see like all together, like knowing all the knowledge that we had gained throughout the course, being able to create this project and see how the data and how we were able to visualize it. Along with that, I really did like my Idea 101 class. I was able to make so many friends and, you know, it was a very collaborative experience. And I was also just not just able to make friends, but also network and meet other people. I think that was just a great experience. All right, great. Thank you all so much. Um, and and to, the, to Veronica and Bailey and the folks, answering so many questions, uh, typing out the answers, doing a heroic job. Thank you so much. Um, these are all really great questions. And of course, you all will continue to have questions and you can always feel free to reach out to us. Um, 
Veronica, if you could go ahead and share your screen one more time. I think there's a final slide. Yep, perfect. So um, just some important dates to keep in mind. Um, so we mentioned that February 20th deadline to submit the Carillon interest form. Um, so make sure you do that. Like we said, that doesn't lock you into anything, but it does hold a spot for you. Um, and it also it enables you to preference the communities that you'd like to be a part of. Um, so assuming that you submit that by that date, on March 2nd, you should receive an email that will confirm uh, your placement in, in your specific Carillon community. Um, we have a number of virtual, we have a number of in-person open houses, uh, three of them, and then one virtual open house um, for the admitted students. Those are all listed there. Um, I believe Abby also mentioned our faculty led, led webinars. So once you all get um, assigned to a specific community within Carillon, um, you'll have the opportunity throughout the month of March to attend a webinar that's specific to your community where you can meet your faculty member and learn more about that specific community and what you all will be doing. Um, and so those dates are to be announced, but stay tuned. A um, couple of other deadlines. Um, if you are in Freshman Connection, May 1st is the deadline to confirm enrollment. Um, and then another big one, I know a lot of folks had questions about uh, the residence halls and how do you preference um, which sort of hall you're in. The, the way that you get sort of sign, assigned to a residence hall is by submitting your housing and dining agreement. Um, so the sooner you do that, the better. That will ensure that you get um, in the residence hall you want to be in. But the, the hard deadline for that is May 1st. Um, so those are the important dates. Um, and I think on the last slide, we just have some contact info if folks have more questions. Yeah, so that's our email. I know we didn't get to all the questions, but we got to quite a few of them. Um, feel free to send us a, a message, give us a call. Um, we have a couple more office hours. So we have these virtual office hours that you can find linked on our website. Um, so if you didn't get your question answered today or if another question comes up, you can drop into that virtual office hour and it will be a Zoom call. It'll be le way less people than who are on the call right now. Um, and you can get uh, your questions answered. And I do also want to plug our social media, our Instagram and our Facebook, in particular the Instagram, uh, definitely check that out. We've got some, some great content on there as well. Um, so I want to thank you all for attending um, and, and taking the time to consider Carillon communities. We're really excited that, um, that you all are, you know, interested and that you're admitted to UMD. We hope to see you soon. Like I said, feel free if you have questions to reach out to us. I once again want to thank our, our, our four students for joining us tonight and sharing some of your experiences um, and thank our Carillon staff as well for, for all of your help with this webinar tonight. All right, well, thanks and take care.